What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist and today I'm back, back from the past just like Samurai Jack. And today I'm bringing you some more Warhammer 40k content. This time we are looking into my own personal army, well one of my three armies, and it is not the Tau nor the Space Marines. Today we're going to take a look at my Infernal Sons, my Chaos Space Marine army. Now recently GW has been releasing a lot of chaos centric stuff. We've got Shadow Spear that has brand spanking new models for chaos. On top of that, we've got Abaddon, the War Master, Harkin World Claimer, and then we have the brand new Lord Discordant. So if you play Black Legion, or if you play a lot of Demon Engines, the stuff that has been coming out has been tailored specifically to you. And not just that, but also Chaos in general, because just recently they announced that there will be new models for Chaos Space Marine Terminators, as well as just regular Chaos Space Marines. So basically it's a revamp to the old school Chaos models and I'm loving it. So because of that, I decided to show you what I have currently in my army. All in all, I think it's about four to 5,000 points bare, I think, or maybe not. But anyway, what you're gonna be seeing here is basically the chaotic half of my Celestial Sons. So if you don't know, my Celestial Sons is a fan army that I'm basing it off of the lore behind the 11th Legion. Uh, one of the Lost Legions, for that matter. So yes, they do have a Primarch, and they're kind of focused more on the 30k setting, but they do dabble over to 40k, and based on their history, their lore, they actually have a lot to do with 40k too. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, there is a playlist on the Celestial Suns that I'm working on. Uh, there's actually two. There's a playlist that just focuses on like themes, ideas, and all that stuff. And then there's another one, currently has two videos in it, I believe. And that is like the concrete hardcore lore that is uh, codex approved by my standards. So that lore will not be changing whatsoever. It's set in stone, so to speak. Um, and then from then on, you, I've got a whole bunch of like theories and just a bunch of videos. <laughs> so those will be linked at the end of this video. Uh, but for now, let's just dive into these epic models. The first model we will be taking a look at is this beautiful demon. It's very dragon-like or wyvern-like, uh, whatever you want to call it. And it's not actually a Forge World nor GW model. I believe this is a, whew, it's either going to be Kingdom Death, I believe, yeah, I believe the company is called Kingdom Death, and this is like the Dragon King sculpt. There is a little bit of um, conversion work with the tail, has a Slanesh Demonette, I believe, kind of configured on there, and that actually works to the lore behind it. Pretty much what happened was that I had a Chaos... Um, Slanesh kind of mix with a demonic entity to create this demon prince. It didn't go as planned, but it's still a monstrosity of the warp nonetheless. Um, the video for that is actually called The Obsidian Scaled King. So if you want to check out that video to learn more about the lore behind this model, go right ahead. Moving on up, we have this other model, which is surrounded by blood letters. Obviously, the blood letters are indeed GW sculpts. Um, they haven't really done much in my games that I've used them in. I kind of put them in the warp and then I deep strike them out, and so far I can't get them into combat. Either they get shot up in Overwatch and I'm not close enough to charge in, or I just roll really badly and I can't charge in. So blood letters have not been really good for me. However, the demon prince you see here is just amazing. Uh, it's by Creature Caster, again, a third party um, miniature company. It looks amazing. Uh, this guy is named Varos of the Bloody Lance because eventually I will be putting like spears and lances modeled on this guy. And the lore behind that is that 
when he takes off these spears and he tosses them at his enemies, the blood on them, which is his own blood, ignites and sparks like a flaming javelin or spear or whatever, impaling the enemy. So that's where he gets his name of the Bloody Lance. Moving on to yet another bloody eclipse. By the way, a bloody eclipse are the five generals of the Midnight Sun. The Midnight Sun is the main um, warlord, I guess you could call it, of this army. And then the five generals are the five bloody eclipses. Of course, you got Varos for corn, and kind of a mix of Chaos Undivided and Slanesh would be the demon prince that we saw earlier, the black dragon one. Um, but this one here, he is the bloody eclipse of Zeech, Arunsar the Hundred. And he looks like a thousand sun sorcerer guy, because Arunsar the Hundred actually has a warp ability that allows him to switch bodies. He can basically transfer his psyche into another and take their body that way, similar to kind of how uh, Lucius the Eternal works. And this happens to be his hundredth body, therefore he is Arunsar the Hundred. And um, he is secretly working to usurp uh, Dante Hueco the Midnight Sun and take his body, but he's not quite to that level yet. Next up is one of my favorite models and one of my favorite character lore-wise, Bellacrax the Decaying. So I've used a slightly converted um, Lord of Contagion. And he just looks badass. His base is a freaking rock, which I guess it works. And he is surrounded by plague bearers of Nurgle. This guy's pretty beefy. Um, the lore behind this guy is that he used to be the leader of the Celestial Sons' Terminator squads. He eventually became corrupted by Nurgle, began eating decaying bodies, and now his body is decaying. But through that decay, he doesn't feel pain, and he also regenerates. Um, that's the blessing of Nurgle that has granted him. And he always lets his opponent hit first. And that has almost gotten him killed, but that's just how he likes it. He gives them a free shot, and then after that, he unleashes hell upon his enemies. Um, I've got a huge story planned for him, and it, I don't know, I just really like this guy, this character. So uh, let's continue on. Now this model here is special to me. Uh, when I was working on coming up with the lore for my Celestial Sons, I always had it that a splinter fleet would kind of emerge from them and kind of be chaotic. and. Spoiler alert, so does my Primarch. So Alec Elric is the name of my Primarch, and he also joins Chaos for one thing or another. Again, you'll see why later on. And this model was actually given to me by one of you guys, one of the subscribers. And uh, it looks amazing. It was almost pretty much scratch built, and just like the intricacies and just overall the look of it looks really badass and it's based off of this image here now this image I had commissioned by Legion 5551 aka Aaron he did an awesome job at doing this piece of art um, it just looks amazing the way he's commanding his army and you've got like Zichi and demons in the background and you could just see the parallels between the model and the artwork and just how awesome it came together and I'm, I'm really proud of it. Like, you guys, the fans, the subscribers, have done so much, you know, to help me in my journey of creating my army. And again, thank you. And now you guys get to appreciate it by seeing the outcomes of the Infernal Suns. So again, thank you for this awesome model. Yes, it's a Primarch. He's probably going to use Abaddon's rules on him, because it's kind of focused on what Abaddon has, like the claw and the sword. Uh, we'll see how good he is, but seeing as how he's the freaking war master, he's, his rule's gotta be good. Now we come to the main man himself, the leader of the Infernal Sons, the Midnight Sun, Dante Hueco. So Dante Hueco has undergone a lot of modifications to his body. Um, he used to be a potent psychic user as a loyalist, 
now that he's been changed or corrupted, however you want to see it, he's basically been improving his body or so he thinks. Um, he instantly got corrupted by Zeech, he saw the allure of chaos, and basically all of the chaos gods have been infusing him bit by bit, and he didn't like this. He wanted to rule himself, and because of this, he would lop off portions of his body that he didn't like. So for example, let's say Nurgle gave him a tentacle arm, he wasn't having it, he'd chop it off, and he'd have one of his warp smiths augment his body with like a cybernetic limb. And this happened so much so that this is now what he's become. Pretty much an amalgamation of demon, space marine, and machine. Rule-wise, what I use is a Chaos Hellrite on a Dark Abiant, which is a Forge World stat line. Um, it works pretty well, it makes sense. But with the Lord Discordant coming out soon, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this model as Dante or if he's, he's going to become that other model because it looks amazing. The Lord Discordant is definitely going to be in here, as well as a few other models from Shadow Sphere. But for now, this is all I have, and I just wanted to share it with you. So let's continue on. So what you see here is one of my favorite models, and that is the Mauler Fiend slash the Forge Fiend. These guys I have um, as Mauler Fiends just because, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't go with the shooty ones. These just look more, I guess, more primal, more animalistic, since the Mauler Fiend's face is pretty much a gun. These just look more menacing. And I never realized just how freaking huge the model was. When I first got these, I got these off eBay, they were already painted and everything. They just looked amazing, and I've just been just gravitating towards the allure of a freaking Mauler Fiend. And plus, the lore on them is pretty cool. Next up, I have Cranon the Relentless, aka just the regular Chaos Lord. Uh, Cranon the Relentless is a model from the box set that pitted the Dark Angels against the Crimson Slaughter, and I just thought that this model looked really badass, so I had to include it in here some way, somehow. And he's a stand-in for a character that I created known as Icaros. Icaros is a betrayer from the Celestial Suns. He used to be a part of the Angelus Solaris, which is kind of... Think of like Sanguinary Guard to the Blood Angels, but the equivalent to my Celestial Sons. So he was like an elite warrior, and he actually betrayed them, almost killed the captain, Tachyon Black, and he joined the Infernal Sons. So this is what he looked like before one thing led to another, and he got infused into the Demon Prince that we saw um, beforehand, the uh, Black Dragon thing. So, cool model, um, and he just looks badass. The model you see behind him is another work of conversion that I saw on eBay. It's basically the Age of Sigmar corn... I don't know what it's called. It's, it's a corn Age of Sigmar model, and it's got a juggernaut head, and it just looked really cool. And I thought that it'd be like a cool, like, maybe chaos spawn or something like that. I was thinking Demon Prince at first, but like my Demon Princes <laughs> are a little over the top, so he wouldn't really fit on the scale-wise. So probably a chaos spawn sounds right, and it just looks really cool. The artwork, or the paint job for this guy, was actually done by Hydra Miniature Painting, which is a very, very talented studio that works on miniature conversions, miniature paint jobs, and that thing. Highly recommend them to you guys. You can check out his Facebook um, down below in the description. Hopefully I remember to put it there. If not, check out Hydra Miniature Paintings on Facebook. Really talented guy. Next up, we have uh, Raptors. They're not Raptors. They're basically Assault Marines. Or Chaos Assault Marines. Um, I think they're called Raptors. They may not be. Um, they look really cool. Again, same guy painted them. Hydra Miniature Paintings. Um, and I just thought these were pretty... Like, I needed something that's kind of fast, so I just wanted to include them into this army. And then we come to another model of epic proportions. We've got a Hellforged Leviathan Dreadnought. Leviathan Dreadnoughts are very, very scary. They do a lot of work. Uh, recently I've played them against both the Death Guard and the Orcs, 
and this thing was just wrecking things left and right. Um, it is indeed a target priority kind of guy, so everybody will try to take him down. Um, unfortunately, Gersh's tank busters did a number on him, but he did work before he went down, so it is a really scary model, and um, he's, he's painted in the Death Company colors, black, red, and he just looks gruesome. Highly recommend you guys play the Leviathan Dreadnoughts because they are a beast on the on the board. Now I forgot to mention them when I was talking about Dante, but behind him you can see I've got two Hellbrutes. Again, this kind of fits with the whole demon engine, demon forge kind of aspect of my army. And um, they're also painted by Hydra miniature paintings, check them out. And yeah, they're, they're just basically arranged um, support. They got missiles, they got last cannons, and uh, they do work, especially if you got somebody back there either repairing them if they get damaged or buffing them with rerolls and whatnot. So once the new uh, Shadow Spear comes out and I get access to Obliterators, that's going to be something to, to worry about. Obliterators plus Hellbrutes, that's a combination. And lastly, I have these Chaos Space Marines here. They're painted pretty brutally. <laughs> you can see blood all over them. They're dirty. They don't care. They're there to go out and basically butcher things. Um, I could play them as regular Chaos Space Marines, but lately I've been using them as Corn Berserkers, and I can't stress enough how amazing they are gameplay-wise. Berserkers, you can run them in, I think, 30-man squads, and that basically guarantees that they're going to make it to wherever you need them to be. Um, yeah, they're going to get fired at, so you might want to put them in like a Land Raider or something. Probably can't put that many in there. However, they are just crazy. Like, they have an insane amount of attacks. Um, always keep them with chain swords and pistols. You just get the most amount of attacks. Because I think they have two attacks each. Plus charging. Plus, and then you get, like, add-ons and buffs and whatnot. It, it, they're scary. They they always do work. Like I said, I've went up against uh, Gersh1 and... A, friend a few times recently and they've always been the MVP of the game. I can't stress enough how well Berserkers are so again if you play corn, Berserkers all the way. And I think that's everything. I mean we've got Helldrakes. If I didn't mention them I've got a Helldrake. <laughs> I need some type of aerial support. But yeah I've got Helldrakes. I've got Demon Prince of Undivided, Demon Prince of Corn, Blood Letters, Nurgle, uh, the Lord of Contagion, Berserkers, Chaos Lord, Chaos Spawn, Hellforged Leviathan, Hellbrutes, Forge Fiends, the Psyker, Abaddon, quote unquote. Um, yeah, I think this army is pretty solid the way it is. But again, I really want the Lord Discordant in there as like a centerpiece because I could just imagine how big it's going to be. Um, I feel like it's probably going to be similar to those Dragon Riders from Age of Sigmar, but hopefully it's way bigger than that. I might get the guys from uh, Dark Bunny Creatives to paint them up. Another amazing studio that has done awesome work for me. Um, unfortunately, I think they're, the work that they've done for me is for my Space Marine army, not the Chaos Space Marines, but we'll see where that, where that goes. But again, um, tons of awesome things for Chaos coming out, and... Um, if you guys want to show me your Chaos Army, let me see it over on the Facebook page. Pictures of this army has been posted over on Facebook, and I've got pictures of my Tau Army, as well as an old Grey Knight Army that I used to have, and my Celestial Sons are on there too. So go over to the Facebook page, hit that like button, we do post there every now and then. And uh, you guys can get some inside looks into our armies. I know Gorsh1 has been using that lately too. He did a very awesome work for a Age of Sigmar model. And he kind of did a little bit of a conversion work there. So if you guys want to see a peek into our armies, check out the Facebook page. And always hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So you can catch some more epic 40k content each and every day. Comment down below what you thought about my army. And I'll see you guys next time. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you then.